What's up everyone, Justin with Jade Gapple here, and today I've got the review of the iPad mini. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, let's go ahead and talk about the display. The iPad mini features a 7.9 inch 1024 by 768 resolution display with a 163 ppi pixel density. This is not retina quality, but I have to say that this display is not as bad as most people may think, but there is a noticeable difference when you compare it with the retina display. The best way to explain it would be, in regular use you won't really notice much of a difference, the screen still looks pretty good, however when you're reading stuff like text it would be more noticeable, it wouldn't be nearly as crisp as it would be on a retina display. Taking a look at the back, the iPad mini has a nice anodized aluminum construction which is very durable, and the back is a nice slate color, depending on what color you get, either the white and silver or the black and slate like you see right in front of me. On the bottom, the new iPad mini has the redesigned lightning dock connector as well as a set of great sounding stereo speakers that are overall pretty loud and actually surprise me in terms of the quality. Now taking a look at the camera, the iPad mini takes great video and stills, the iPad mini can take 5 megapixel stills, and full HD 1080p video recording. On the front, you've got a 720p HD video recording FaceTime camera that can take 1.2 megapixel stills. This is great for conference calls, FaceTime, and Skype. When you take a look at the iPad mini, it's definitely very sleek, coming in at just 7.2mm thick, which is equivalent to the thickness of a pencil, and it weighs in at just 300 grams, which is the same weight of an average notepad, and it is about half the weight of a typical iPad. So just giving you guys a closer look, I definitely have to say I love the 8 inch size. In my opinion, it's the size that I would like a tablet, that's why I never went ahead and bought the bigger iPad. Just give you guys a closer look at the sides, it definitely feels great in the hand, although it may be kind of awkward to hold with one hand for some people, like me, if you don't have the biggest hands in the world. In terms of the specs, the iPad mini has an A5 dual core processor clocked at almost 1GHz and just over 500 megabytes of RAM. The iPad mini now also has Siri and in equivalence, it's pretty close in terms of performance to the iPod Touch 5th generation, which has very very similar to specs, except the processor is clocked a little bit lower. So now it's time to use a benchmark called Geekbench. This gives you overall hardware score of how the internals of the device perform. So let's just see what score we receive. So the iPad mini came in with 748, which for reference is about half of what the Google Nexus 7 got. But in real life testing, the iPad mini was a little bit faster. So it pretty much just tells you that this score may not mean everything, but just give you guys an idea of the specs on the iPad mini. Moving on, I'm going to go ahead and test out a website here, let's just type in apple.com and if you want to see how fast it was compared to other devices, go ahead and check out my comparisons, but just let you guys take a look here, it's definitely very very fast, an improvement from the A4 processor, so overall you have a very nice web browsing experience. When I compared it with the A6 processor on the iPhone 5, the iPhone 5 was faster obviously because it has an A6 processor, but the overall difference isn't too big and you could see that the web browsing and everything is still very smooth, very snappy and the experience on the 8 inch display is definitely great, much better than the web experience on the competitor such as the Google Nexus 7. So we're just going to boot up The Verge here just to give you guys an example of a few websites I decided to use for testing. And The Verge does take a little bit longer as there's a lot of photos and everything on the home page so that's one thing to note as well. But it isn't anything to be mad over, it's still pretty fast, and the pinch to zoom and everything is snappy, overall works very very well, and I have to say I'm very pleased with the web browsing experience. So I'm just going to continue scrolling around here, and just give you guys more of an idea of how the web browsing works, and now we're going to move on to gaming. So the first thing we're going to test is Asphalt 7. So this game performed very nice on the iPad mini, the graphics look great, it performed a little bit better than it did on the iPod Touch 5th generation, but I have to say, the gaming experience was great so far. So next up is Infinity Blade 2. As a lot of you may know, Infinity Blade 2 is probably one of the most detailed graphic intensive games available on the App Store, so this is a great way to test out the performance on the iPad mini. Go! 
So once again, the iPad mini was great in handling Infinity Blade 2, a little bit better than it did on the iPod Touch 5th generation, which I did notice some skips here and there, but on the iPad mini, it definitely performed very nicely and you should be getting a great gaming experience out of this device. So what do I think about the iPad mini? I know a lot of people will be deciding whether or not to get the iPad mini or the Google Nexus 7, and it may seem like an easy choice to go straight for the Google Nexus 7 due to the fact that it's about $130 cheaper for the same amount of storage, and the fact that it has a quad-core processor and double the RAM, and the overall benchmark score scored about double the iPad did. But in real life tests, as you saw probably in TLD's video, the graphics rendering, the games and everything did perform better on the iPad mini despite the fact that it only scored half of what the Nexus 7 did in Geekbench. So it really doesn't matter what specs these two devices came out in, but I think the iPad mini is a better tablet, not trying to be a fanboy here, but in all honesty, pretty much the biggest reason why I went for an iPad is due to the fact that it has tablet optimized apps, which is something that the Google Nexus 7 doesn't have. It pretty much just runs some scaled up mobile apps like you have on your Android phone, just put up to about a 7 inch. And some of you may like that, but in terms of my opinion, the iPad mini has great apps. The overall tablet optimized app look much more developed and the user interface is great on the iPad mini. The web browsing is also really nice and the extra inch of real estate in terms of the screen may not seem big to most people, but I do notice a difference and I do think that the extra one inch of screen gives you much larger experience in terms of running applications and web browsing also just loads up more of the page and the experience on the iPad is just much more developed and I know a lot of people were criticizing the fact that Apple um, even made a mini iPad. I definitely think it's really great and I think eight inches is a perfect size for me at least and this would be something that I'd use every day. So thanks for watching. This is just the review of the iPad mini. Don't forget to hit the like button below. Hit the subscribe button above to be notified of future content. I'll see you in my next video.